Yo, what up Street Talks, Eric Kim. All right, secrets of happiness. So, I mean, obviously happiness is uh, different from everybody, but to me, happiness, the, the definition of happiness is essentially like physiologically, physio physiological power overwhelming, where you're in hyper abundant health, you're in hyper good spirits, and in life, you see beauty, and you are very appreciative of everything you see, find an explorer, and uh, experience. So, my thoughts. Wow, so beautiful. So with, with happiness, I think uh, happiness actually starts in the human body where it's, it's less about just like things happening to you and you know, you getting a bunch of money, whatever. Cause you could be the freaking richest guy in the world, but if you're in poor physiological health, does it matter? I don't think so. So my practical thoughts, um, try to, okay, so it seems like the, the optimal strategy in life is to reduce the maximal amount of bullshit from your life and the maximal amount of negative people and naysayers and stuff like that. And I do find that in order for me to become more and more epic and stuff like that, essentially it's for me to become more suspicious. So, I think one of my one of my downsides that at least I get from my mom is I'm a little bit too trusting of people or their motives. And 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 this is actually another thing I discovered. Most people are actually not. I don't think people are sinister. I think people is just like people. You know, like there's there's the Jay Z line. You know, you was who you was before you got here. So people's character is their destiny and I don't think you could actually blame people for their characters because I see others as being able to exhibit less free will than myself and then other people are essentially products in their environment like you know you grew up in an abusive family and it fucked you up I mean it's not really your fault but that's just who you is like you know if you see a dog with rabies you don't blame the dog for having rabies, but you just stay the fuck away from the dog with rabies or else it's gonna bite you and that's not gonna be pretty. So similar thing with other people is like, you know, this may be like kind of a stoic thought is, other people are kind of like that dog. Some people have rabies, some don't. And the goal in life is, don't let people with rabies bite you. <laughs> it's very simple. And once again, I don't think most people are trying to be sinister for the sake of being sinister. It's just most people don't know any better. And this is kind of towards an elitism in society where, you know, most people are not wise. Most people are not prudent. Most people, they don't know what they want for themselves. No, do they know what is best for themselves and once again it's not be, it's not because of any sort of fault it's just more of like they haven't had the opportunity to exercise that faculty of self-reflection and stuff like that so we are not to disdain others for that But rather, it is our own personal goal to, to stay focused on our own personal life goals rather than kind of getting distracted by everything else. Man, aren't these the best flowers of all time?
I love it, man. Freaking Lumix G9 for the win. This is like the best video ever. And also just, yeah, like don't let other people bully you into thinking what's good or what's not good. I'm like so enjoying shooting these flowers right now. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so... Yeah, so I think uh, for me, the secret of happiness has kind of been mostly like a via negativa thing where getting rid of negative things, getting rid of irritants from your life is typically better. So for example, negative people like, you know, I cut my dad out of my life. He was like probably the most toxic uh, cloud that could uh, exist. So that was, that was good for me. Um, and just like people who use uh, suspicious of and sus of, just like, you don't, you don't have to like be super brutal. You can just like, you know, just keep your distance, right? It's like social distancing, right? Is that like, you know, some people, like now the, the norm is you wanna keep at least like six foot away from people. I prefer the, the 20 foot rule. I see somebody walking 20 foot close to me. I'll just like go to the other side of the street. And once again, the more you could reduce noise and bullshit from your life, the more joy, interesting ideas you could let into your life. Seems like this is a very simple principle. And even I think knowledge and wisdom, kind of like Nassim Taleb says, it works like a via negativa thing too, is that like, even probably my biggest benefit in college, studying sociology, wasn't what I learned, but what I unlearned. So unlearning societal norms, societal shaming, stuff like that. And essentially challenging everything that I know, uh, that I thought was true, and learn to think for myself. And the funny thing is, that's certainly a trait that's not encourage anymore of thinking for yourself you know think for yourself suckers because like uh ain't nobody gonna think for you and but then now essentially it's for to me it's a to me it's a matter of training because if your teachers and your mentors don't encourage you to think for yourselves your society or your schooling doesn't encourage you to think for yourselves you're not gonna think for yourself and once again like i think to cast blame on other people is kind of silly but what's more important is like for us to become more selfish onto ourselves and just self-centered and self-focused in terms of ourselves, our own personal life goals and stuff like that because I think what happens to a lot of people, especially philosophers, is that they think humans should be this and this way and they get angry because others don't do as they think they should do for themselves and it's also like we tend to think we know what's best for others but once again, we, we don't know what's best for others other people don't even know what's best for them. So it's like, yo, just kind of like <laughs> leave other people alone. And what's our, our more noble goal? Our more noble goal is to strive what we think is best for ourselves, to maximize our own personal benefit, um, to not just adapt to situations, but to capitalize on difficulty, capitalize on difficult situations. Like, even if you think about how human evolution worked, I don't think we actually evolved to just adapt to the situations at hand. So this is kind of like anti-Charles Darwin in the sense that, you know, we had certain body parts and as humans and animals and beasts, we're always seeking our maximal advantage. So some humans were able to benefit from certain circumstances and some part of our organs or our body parts became more advantageous. This is actually the funny thing I realized. If you look at your hand, you notice that all your hands are like a different length, but when you actually clench it, all of your fingers end up being straight, which makes for maximal grabbing powers. So, um, seek to capitalize on difficult situations. Don't complain, moan, blame. Just strive to seek your maximal self-advantage and everything else will follow.